AEDT 1170U Psychological Foundations and Digital Technology. Module 3, Video Clip 3.2, Intelligence, or What Makes You Smart? Here are some guiding questions for this video. What are the historical notions of intelligence? Describe Gardner's ideas on multiple intelligences and how his theory allows for a variety of learning styles. Does Goldman's theory of emotional intelligence have any impact on learning in community or our online community? And does our notion of intelligence include technological or digital intelligence? Here are a few general definitions. Intelligence refers to the mental abilities needed to select, adapt to, and shape environments. It involves the abilities to learn from experience, solve problems, reason, and successfully meet challenges and achieve goals. Cognitive psychologists study these mental activities, including the ways that we create concepts, solve problems, make decisions, and form judgments. Cognition refers to these mental activities associated with thinking, knowing, remembering, and communicating. Let's review the historical notions of intelligence. The modern intelligence testing movement began with the French government trying to predict school achievement. Alfred Binet measured children's mental age versus their chronological age. Louis Terman spoke about the innate IQ or intelligence quotient and this test is known as the Stanford Binet test where IQ equals the mental age over the chronological age times a hundred. So the average child whose mental and chronological ages are the same has an IQ of 100. Today's intelligence tests produce a mental ability score based on the test takers performance relative to the average performance of others the same age. Is intelligence one general ability or several specific abilities? Spearman developed a method called factor analysis to identify clusters of test items that measured a common ability and he called this factor G or general intelligence. However, more recently Howard Gardner has done work on multiple intelligences and here is how he describes them. Linguistic intelligence involves a sensitivity to spoken and written language it involves our ability to learn languages and our capacity to use language to accomplish our goals. Logical mathematical intelligence consists of the capacity to analyze problems logically and carry out mathematical operations and investigate issues scientifically. Musical intelligence involves skill in the performance, appreciation, or composition of musical patterns. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence entails our potential to use our whole body or parts of our body to move well with physical literacy. Spatial intelligence involves the potential to recognize and use patterns of wide space and confined areas. Interpersonal intelligence is concerned with the capacity to understand motivations, desires, and intentions of other people, so it allows people to work effectively with others. Intrapersonal intelligence entails the capacity to understand oneself to appreciate one's feelings, fears, and motivations. The naturalistic intelligence has to do with nurturing and relating information to one's natural surroundings, including classifying natural forms of the environment. An existential intelligence refers to a spiritual or religious intelligence as a possible additional type. Go to the link below and take the multiple intelligence test to see where your strengths lie. You may be strong in one or more of the areas. Robert Sternberg had another model of intelligence where he identified three aspects. Analytical intelligence involved academic problem-solving intelligence. Creative intelligence, which referred to reacting adaptively to novel or new situations. And practical intelligence that is required for everyday tasks that have multiple solutions. Another recent model is Daniel Goleman's model of emotional intelligence, which involves our ability to perceive, express, understand, and manage our emotions. Emotional intelligence is not necessarily related to academic aptitude, and generally researchers find that women tend to be better at emotional intelligence than men. We'll talk more about this in our module on gender and technology. But what about the relationship between creativity and intelligence? Creativity can be thought of as the ability to produce ideas that are both novel and valuable. A certain level of intelligence is necessary but not sufficient for creativity. In general, people who do well in intelligence tests do well on creativity tests. 
One might consider that there are five components of creativity. Expertise, or a well-developed knowledge base. Imagination and imaginative thinking skills, which is an ability to see things in new ways and make new connections. An adventuresome personality that can tolerate uncertainty and that seeks out new experiences. Intrinsic motivation, such as challenge and satisfaction in doing a task. And a creative environment that sparks and supports the development of creativity. Go to the link below to try the self-creativity test and see where you rank. Here are a few general points about intelligence. First of all, it seems to run in families. People with the same genetics seem to share similar intelligence. Identical twins have very similar gray matter volume in their brains, and identical twins who've been raised separately have similar IQ scores. Genes for genius have been located on chromosome 6 in humans, but environment also matters. Fraternal twins who are treated alike tend to score similarly than other siblings. Over time, adopted children score more like their biological parents than anyone else. So it's clear that there is an inheritability of intelligence. Most of the variation in intelligence testing relates to genetic factors. But early intervention can help. Children in stimulating environments do very well. So what about super babies? There's really no evidence to support this if children are raised in a normal stimulating environment. With regards to gender, girls are generally more verbally fluent, better spellers, more sensitive to touch, taste, and odor, and more capable of remembering words and the location of objects. Boys tend to outnumber girls 13 to 1. In high SAT scores of math, boys do better in spatial ability. But among high school underachievers, boys outnumber girls 2 to 1. These are some information from Meyer's textbook. But be careful not to stereotype. Are IQ tests discriminatory? Tests detect innate differences in intelligence, but also performance differences can be caused by cultural experiences. Is the test biased towards some groups rather than others? And is there a stereotype threat, such as all girls think like this or all boys are like this? That's a self-confirming prophecy that can be evaluated based on a negative stereotype. Remember that IQ tests reflect only one aspect of personal competence and we cannot generalize or stereotype. Let's take a look at right brain versus left brain. There is physiological evidence to show that our right and left brains emphasize different functions. In general, the right brain emphasizes creativity, artistic and intuitive thinking, whereas the left brain emphasizes logical, rational modes of thinking. Dear Left Brain, I bought us a car that has class-leading 35 MPG and a 5-star crash test safety rating. Dear Right Brain, I bought us a car with a 274 horsepower turbocharged engine and panoramic sunroof. Now both of you shut up and let me drive. The new Kia Optima, not your average mid-size sedan. Go to the link below to try the left versus right brain self-test. Here's a few big ideas for bantering about. Do you think there is a digital intelligence that we're born with? Would this type of intelligence use more of the right brain or the left? Are computers creative or logical? And what would happen to the world if we had independently intelligent computers? Here are the synthesis questions for this video clip. After taking the tests for multiple intelligence, creativity, and left-right brain, reflect on how this affects your ability to learn in an online environment. What features of online learning work well for you based on your strengths as identified by the tests? And which type of learning environment reaches a wider variety of intelligences?